everyone, thank you so much for joining me on this video. I really appreciate your time, your company. I know that it is a busy time of year. It is also a busy time of year for our orchids, depending on what season you are in. I'm here in the Northern Hemisphere in Southern Spain. And the subject du jour today for our Orchid Lingo series is roots. Once again, I apologize if I do not have all the footage readily available with regards to what I'm going to say today. I do not use any footage outside of my own, but I hope that the information is still relevant. And to fill in the blanks while I speak, I have Brassavola cordata right there in your face. And in the background, beautiful, beautiful spike of a Tolumnia pink wrist. So I'm hoping that this will at least give some interest if I don't have the appropriate footage to show you. I love me some roots. I love me some healthy roots. I love me white velamen, green root tips, red root tips, you name it. Roots are super important for our orchids and that is the duh out of the way. So before I get into the subject of roots, I'm going to state the obvious right away. What we look at and talk about when we use the term roots is in actual fact the outer membrane called velamen. This membrane acts like a sponge soaking up the water. So the function of the velamen is there not only to protect the roots, but also the cellular structure underneath the velamen, which transports the water to the stele which can be considered like a blood vein for orchids. It is the stele, which is the actual root of the orchid that delivers nutrients to the pseudobulb and leaves. For the sake of simplicity though, in this video, I'm going to refer to what we see as a whole as roots, because ideally we should not see the stele ever. If we get a glimpse of the stele, then that is probably because some of these factors have kicked in. The velamen is damaged, rotting away the cells to expose the stele. We have cracked the velamen by accident. We cut into the velamen because of sheer curiosity to see what is inside. Probably very rarely, but I know it's been done, as in my case. The growing point deteriorated due to environmental factors. So that brings me to the next point. Why do roots stop growing? Well, actually, all of what I've just said are reasons for roots to stop growing, but they don't always apply. So root rot clearly is one reason a root would stop growing as a result of too much water or dehydration of the velamen due to no water or no humidity. Touching the growing point of a root due to oils or impurity of our hands will also stop the growing point from extending. Applying too much fertilizer, causing the velamen to burn, including pest treatments. The water pH being out of the ideal range, either too acidic or too alkaline. Abrasions to the velamen will also stop a root growing. Temperature. If it's too hot, too much direct sun on the growing point, or also too cold, will stop a growing point or a root from growing. And another thing is no influence on our part. Roots grow seasonally, the velamen closes over the growing point, and when the time comes, when the conditions are right, when the temperatures are agreeable, it reactivates and starts growing again. So in order to assure the healthy growth of any orchid's root system, the points should be reversed. Avoid root rot. Ensure oxygen access to the roots either by plenty of airflow or in some setups by regular flushing. Ensure adequate access to water either by high humidity, rain or watering regularly depending on the setup and media. Avoid touching the growing points so that they don't collapse. Monitor the quantity of fertilizer so as not to have the media surface or mount dry out too fast, leaving fertilizer or supplement salts behind. Make sure that you pH your water in the range between 5.8 and 6.5, whether you're using fertilizer or supplement. If you're not using fertilizer or any supplements, then the pH of the water can be seven because usually if there's no impurities in the environment, rain will fall at a pH of seven. And these orchids, normally prefer rainwater, so 
Bear that in mind when you use fertilizer or supplement that you pH between 5.8 and 6.5 because that is the optimal pH range for the absorption of nutrients depending on what you're trying to achieve with your orchid when you water. And then plain water, if it is 7 pH, that is absolutely fine based on the fact that, well, if there are no impurities in the environment and it rains, then the pH would be 7. Another point to protect your roots is to secure your orchid in the pot as best as possible to avoid any abrasions to the root tips on the surface of the pot. And when repotting, always keep an eye on where the root tips are repotting as gently as possible. So is there a way that we can help damaged roots recover? Yes, to some degree. So here we go. If they have rotted that they can't function anymore, there is nothing left to do. But when it comes to burnt velamen, even though that will stay damaged and we have a brown mark, a brown imperfection on the velamen, we can still correct our mistake by using plain water abundantly to flush away any remaining excess salts, thus avoiding a repetition of what has already happened. We can also up the humidity more than usual to rehabilitate the velamen and growing point. But when it comes to the event of total root loss, I am going to do a separate video so as not to make this one so long. There's just something I do want to address here as well. What I find fascinating, it is possible to keep the steely alive without the velamen and cellular structure around the steely intact for a limited time only because our water hitting the steely directly is of course completely different in its makeup than the sponge-like outer cells that would otherwise do the job. Keeping the steely active and functioning has its limitations, but we can carry over the functionality on an exposed steely for maybe a week if we never let it dry out. If the steely is compromised and black, then it won't do anything anymore. It is well and truly dead. But there is usually a little bit of a hint of a green when we peel back the velamen, and that shows the steely is still alive and we should use that to our advantage. I just wanted to add that into this video because as we are talking about roots and the steely is the true root, I found it relative to the subject and wonder what experiences you have had if you have ever decided to use your exposed steely to support the absorption of water for a little longer. And well, let me know in the comments below what you think about it and what your experiences are regarding that little nugget. Roots are awesome. Roots are amazing. Roots grow much faster than any other structure of our orchid. They are fun to watch. So fun fact, know that many orchids, especially cattleya types, will dump old root system without you having made any mistake. It's in their nature to do so. A new root system will grow to replace the old one. And in nature, the old root system will also stop functioning for water absorption and nutrient uptake, but it still will hold on long enough to anchor the orchid. So as a run on thought with regards to that little fun fact, which is not scary once you know that it would happen, because that is what the orchid would do anyway and has nothing to do with anything you've done. Know your hybrid's ancestors. While root growth on most hybrids is more abundant and generous, if there is a diva in its ancestry, this may or may not have an effect as to how the roots of a hybrid will grow and behave, especially if your hybrid has a bifoliate ancestor, which are notorious root dumpers. So let's talk about repotting real quickly. The best practice is, of course, if your orchid is on a mount or a pot, if at all possible, always wait for new roots to grow before repotting. There are exceptions, of course, but 90% of the time we can wait for new roots to grow and then repot. This includes new orchids that you have just received into your collection, mounts when you want to refresh moss or anything along those lines, orchids that are potted up but the media is breaking down, and changing a setup entirely, changing the media, new media, not fresh media but a completely different setup. Wait for new roots to grow. Whenever anything of what I've just mentioned with regards to repotting comes into play, 
Of course, a good cleanup of the old root system is advisable to prolong a healthy climate in the pot for as long as possible. But remember, you want to anchor the orchid into the pot securely and just peeling off the rotted dead velamen, leaving the steely behind can be of help. It is a little bit more laborious than just cutting an old root back to the rhizome or the stem as would be the case of a monopodial orchid, but it also can be beneficial depending on the size of the orchid that you are dealing with. Anchoring is fundamental to maintain root health whether you are mounting or repotting. The abrasions will stop a root from growing. So even if you've made a mistake in the repotting or the mess was such that you had to really get radical, just remember that your new root growth is your plan B. Whatever happens with the older root system, with the steely that you leave on to help secure the orchid in the pot, the new root system is going to eventually take over and that is why new roots are so, so important. And it can take months before you see a new root system, especially if you're getting new orchids in. It can be immediate when you receive your new orchids and you already see nubbins growing at the base of a growth. That is the time to go in, no matter what the calendar tells you. In my personal experience, I have only delayed repotting several times on orchids that needed because I didn't have the courage to do so. I have one example at the moment, which is a Coilostylus parkinsoniana. She is in the process of growing new roots and I really need to get into this orchid. It is a warm to hot grower. So here's a little bit of a bracket of an exception where I am saying what I'm doing is risky, but... <laughs> that very, very popular word when it comes to the orchid hobby, but my temperatures are not conducive at the moment to support whatever stress I'm putting my orchid through when it comes to cleaning up the root system. New roots or not, there is a margin of error if the temperatures do not comply with what the orchid prefers. So keep that in mind just as a last point. Even if your orchid is growing new roots and you do not have a controlled environment where you can provide the right heat, the right temperatures, the right amount of light because you're using artificial lighting to supplement during the colder months of the years, if you do not have all of that in place, then hold off with the repotting until your temperatures coincide with what the orchid's preferences are. Even if that media is old and nasty looking, your orchid will have more stress trying to accommodate new root growth in an environment that is not adequate than it will when you get a chance to repot when your temperatures have matched what the orchid prefers. That's my little tip right there because I have shown my Coilostylus parkinsoniana. She's got new roots growing. And I just mentioned, don't think of the calendar. And that is true depending on your grow environment. I do not have a controlled grow environment. Plus, I do not have the courage on this orchid to experiment that I can now repot her even though it's winter because I know her needs. So know your orchid, know your ancestors, know if the ancestors dump roots, know that bifoliates are usually prone to be the candidates that will dump roots and you're left wondering whether you've done something wrong. Chances are you've done nothing wrong, it's just the nature of the orchid and the new root system will take over. Know that what you're looking at is the layman plus cellular structure around the steely. The steely is the root. If you can maintain the steely happy, even if you've peeled off rotting the layman, then great. Do so for as long as possible and take advantage of the steely to anchor your orchid. I hope this was helpful. I hope that the filled in gaps with my Brasovola cordata and my Tulumnia pink brisht were pleasing to the eye while I was rambling on about the incredibly interesting and important subject of roots. Let me know in the comments below what you think. If I've missed anything, add that to the comments so that if anybody in future watches this video and is looking for more information, then the comments are there. I would appreciate that very, very much. And just as much as I appreciate your time watching this video. Thank you. Have yourselves a beautiful, beautiful day on two conditions this time. 
that you keep your roots safe and you keep yourself safe. Take care. Bye.